okay so we are really in the last weeks of the semester so we have covered a lot of ground so far but the more important ones are also coming namely i mean we are we are really keen to uh, see how we can solve multivariable optimization problem though a multivariable optimization problem is eventually broken down into efficient single variable op efficient single variable optimization problem Ra rather you break it down into single variable optimization techniques and uh, for solving one for solving for each of these variables you choose a very efficient single variable technique like the golden section search or the fibonacci search and so on but there are some protocols involved in handling multivariable problems multivariable problems as you know can be both uh, uh, can be both constrained and unconstrained we did solve a set of multivariable constrained optimization problems where the number of constraints which are equality constraints are less than the is less than the number of the variables and so on so lagrange multiplier was very elegant of course we may not say, say the same thing after the quiz so the lagrange multiplier method is elegant when the derivatives are not painful to evaluate right when the derivatives are painful the the big problem with the lagrange multiplier method is what after you get all these derivatives and all that setting uh, solving the set of simultaneous equations with uh, with crazy things like d to the power of 1.75 l to the power of i mean if it is and imagine uh, 10 variable 20 variable problem and all that so huh yeah but uh, <laughs> some people did get 35 centimeters mm. i know at least one person was got 35 centimeters. i was just uh, cursorily looking at the huh i will see i will see <laughs> as they say we will see so we will see <laughs> okay so rago obstructed my train of thought <laughs> Ah, so the big problem with the Lagrange multiplier, the big problem with the Lagrange multiplier method is, uh, well you can come up to that. I mean, you can do all this, do and then finally you are confronted with the system of simultaneous equation. So we'll uh, we'll go up to the derivatives and see if there are some other techniques by which we can get rid of the solution of the simultaneous equations. So which means you have to search. So you, which means you have to search instead of trying to solve them simultaneously, you have to search and find out. So you'll have a final interval of uncertainty and so on. So multivariable search techniques are very important in thermal sciences because we rarely encounter single variable problems, right? So can you give an example of a two variable optimization problem? In thermal sciences, in heat transfer, heat exchanger. What are the two variables generally? If it's a shell and tube heat exchanger, number of tubes. Okay. Now, if number of tubes is fixed, length and diameter. 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 Length and diameter of the tubes are two basic parameters. Okay. Example: heat exchanger. So how is it affectionately called? How is it affectionately called? Huh? HX is generally taken. STHX. Okay. So shell and tube heat exchanger. Okay. So LD important parameters. If you recall the quiz problem, even if you if you have to place tubes inside a shell, you have to allow for you have to allow for the fluid to flow outside, right? And there is a maximum packing density which you have studied in material science, the body centered cubic lattice and all that. There is a maximum maximum packing density, but you also want you don't want the shell side pressure drop to be too much. You want some path for the fluid to flow. There are other considerations. You cannot simply put Q is equal to H A delta T, minimize or maximize and keep on endlessly doing that. That is a very one dimensional approach to design. Generally, other things will, other things will dictate. For example, maximum inlet temperature, maximum steam admission temperature, maximum inlet temperature to the gas turbine. Turbine. Then, what is a, what is the temperature at which you can let out the cooling water of a power plant? Only five degrees more than the temperature at which you take in. There are other considerations. So there are 
considerations other than thermodynamics and heat transfer which will eventually which have to be incorporated into the analysis okay. So these are important parameters so basically this is a multi dimensional problem correct. So if you want to solve if you want to get an optimum heat exchanger so you have to you have to handle two variables in fact we had more variables in the quiz problem fortunately I said one of the constraints can be converted made into equality and all that. So multi variable search technique generally multi variable optimization problems could be broadly classified into two, two types these are basically multi variable unconstrained and constrained right. Needless to say, needless to say, constrained multivariable optimization problems are a lot are a lot harder to solve compared to unconstrained multivariable optimization problems. Okay. Now, suppose you have a okay, these are ISO objective lines. So let us say some strategies some strategies for what first we will take the unconstrained optimization problem and then we will go to the con constrained optimization problems are a lot harder to solve using search techniques okay. So now if this is a what are some possible strategies just is a two dimensional problem I mean two variable problem x1 and x2 x1 and x2 can represent the length and diameter of the tubes of a shell and tube heat exchanger. One possibility is to start from somewhere now have a grid we have already seen this start from somewhere that is a node P then you have north you have north south east west northeast. So evaluate evaluate the value of the function at its 8 neighboring points and find out in which direction the rate of change of y is maximum. If you for example if this is a we are seeking a maximum here so maximum is sought the maximum is sought you find out where it increases maximum and then for example if it is hopefully it is a northeast then you go here then this northeast forms the new center then you take 8 points around this what you can do is as you go closer as you as your y keeps on increasing and the rate of change of y decreases or something then you can make the grid finer and finer okay so this you can have an adaptive meshing as they say in cfd so you can you can start from start with coarse grid then define the grid So each iteration for a two variable problem how many function evaluations are required Three, four, eight, eight. Oh, what is 8 ah, so for 3 variable problem for every iteration how many how many neighbors apart from this totally 27 including that 27 including this point 9 right including this point 9 so that is like number of number of evaluations. How much was it? 3 power n, where n is the number of variables or it is called the dimensionality of the problem, it is called the dimensionality of the problem. Now, n is number of variables. So, it is a very costly affair from a computational perspective. 
computationally it is very costly or expensive. If each of the solution represents a CFD solution or a solution arising from COMSOL or ANSYS or so on, it is terribly expensive. But no uh, Hessian matrix, all that, uh, no difficulty there. Okay, you have to just keep on evaluating. But there is a there is a method in the madness, as they say. So you're systematically approaching. So is it a elimination method or a hill climbing method? It is a hill climbing method. Very good. So. So, you have already learnt one technique, okay. But if you solve, if you want to solve a problem with decent accuracy and so on, two dimensional problem, it will take one and a half hours because each time you will evaluate eight neighboring nodes and all that. So, what is the name? This is called the lattice method. This is called the lattice, I have already told you. It is called the lattice method. So, this is the this is the simplest technique to, yes, when you go. Stable means it will, that is a good question, but very difficult to evaluate. It depends on how tricky your function is. There are many situations where these things will fail, okay. But one thing is if the grid lattice is coarse enough, then you can start off with this and bracket the solution. This will be the domain. See, initially itself, the problem with some of the other search techniques when you use derivatives is. As the dy by dx starts decreasing or something, it will make you believe, ah, I am going in the right direction, but it will be it will be a downfall because you may get stuck in local minimum or maximum. But these broad, if you make the lattice very broad, I mean very coarse, then you can bracket the domain in which the solution is expected and then you can switch on, then you can go to a far superior technique. If you want to use this technique, suppose you, you, are, you are untrained in optimization, you are naive, okay. You do not know much about optimization, but you want to get a quick handle on this. One possibility is you evaluate several solutions and for several combinations of x1 and x2, you evaluate the solution. The solution could be a CFD solution, it could be the solution of the vector Helmholtz equation, or it could be it could be the solution of potential in civil engineering where ground water discharge, or it could be your cancer problem or heat transfer problem, whatever. So, for this x1 and x2, you solve for the value of y and then try to develop a regression or better still try to develop an artificial neural network. What is an artificial neural, artificial neural network is a, is a computational paradigm where you <coughs> basically mimic what is happening in the brain, the activity of the neurons in the brain and then it is basically a non-linear regression package, non-linear regression between the input and the output. Now if you have got enough combinations of x1 and x2 such that you have, you have already looked at all the solutions which cover most of the regions in the solution space, then it is possible for you to have a neural network. So, the advantage of this neural network is whenever 9 solutions are demanded are by this algorithm at each and every step, you do not go back to your COMSOL, you do not go back to your, you do not go back to your whatever fluent, you go to your neural network, but first prove that your neural network is fine and then you, and then you start searching, it will be computationally very, computationally very inexpensive. But for this to happen, two things must be clear. Two things are required. The neural network must be very robust. So the training must be. So you cannot train in one region. For example, if there is a solution space like this, and your optimum is, and if it is a really a tortuous function, I mean the function goes up and down. You cannot just train in one region, and then try, then try to extrapolate. Training means given given x1 and x2, you should be able to get y. Okay. So that means it will without the software. I mean which was used to evaluate y for a given x1 and x2, you should be able to do that. So if the training is broad based, then the neural network will churn out numbers, okay. So this is a standard approach. So this neural network can be combined with any of these things. Neural network can be combined with any other advanced optimization algorithm. So this helps us, this is a new perspective, I mean. So originally we were so busy in trying to solve the Navier-Stokes equation, getting only the heat transfer rate or the convective heat transfer and we were we were happy, PhD thesis were coming out. My PhD thesis was to get convective and radiative heat transfer in some geometries, that was 16 years back. But now that can be done in 3 months or 4 months. That does not mean that my PhD has to be taken by, at that point, <laughs> at that point in time it was considered, it was considered contemporary. That is the way, I mean that is the way progress. 
that is the way progress as you grow in life you say what i know is very little only if you start reading more and more you know that what you know is very little okay so so long as uh, you have not uh, you have not looked at several things you feel that we are great but the moment you go to science direct and open international journal of heat and mass transfer i feel feverish so out of 10 papers at least 6 or 7 papers i cannot follow we are all professor sitting in the heat transfer lab i mean it is the field has expanded so much so if you want to keep pace with what is going on i think you have to be here. you have to be constantly at it you have be, you have to be on your toes there's no point i mean there's no retirement like i wrote je i can retire i played beta it doesn't work that way okay so why did i say all this <laughs> no 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 there should be some artificial neural this i should be out of your um, out of my mind too. there should be some connection man. Ah, there was a time when getting the Nusselt number itself was considered. I have not. I have still. I have not reached the stage yet <laughs> where I start speaking incoherently. Okay, so there was a point in there was a point in time where getting where solving the Navier-Stokes equation, you are you are you considered as a king, but not any longer. We all used to develop codes. I wrote my own finite volume code in Fortran, and then there was a comp this thing. We had to give the job from here. The printout. We had to wait at eight o'clock in the morning from the Computer center, and then then we have to process it and get the plots and see. You will run for three days, and finally, some there will be some wrong command, and it'll, everything will be wrong. So you'll get up in the middle of the night, and so. <laughs> <laughs> so if if that doesn't happen, you can't get your. Uh, pro, you, I mean, you have not done your project well, or the idea is to get. The idea is to become restless. The idea is not to get sleep and all. That. And again, I'm digressing too much. So okay. now if you want to optimize the heat transfer problem still it is computationally expensive to repeatedly evaluate those repeat repeatedly evaluate we call it as the forward model forward model is given the input conditions you get the value of y y could be temperature nusselt number whatever now you club it with the neural network this will work fine right so this is basically the lattice method but now do you think that some improvements are possible can you think of some for a two variable problem can you think of some improvement right away instead of always evaluating eight neighbors and so you move to the next one you already have some neighbors huh you move to the next one you already have some evaluate the previous uh, maximum uh, point like if the previous maximum was not uh, not reached you evaluate that first so you are uh, so so he is so talking about a memory based algorithm where in the previous direction it is going in some particular i don't know whether it will work always but maybe it's so it's a good static point but now can we solve for one variable at a time i'll show you how it works this is called a unidirectional search So somewhere you have to start. Let us start with this. How do you think we can proceed? We can proceed like this, possibly. Something like that, right? That is, uh, what you do is, you keep x one fixed and try to fit it. First, you keep x one fixed. and try to get get x2 at which the function becomes minimum or maximum then the next iteration keep x2 fixed and then find out x1 because x1 x2 are constantly changing if y is a function of x1 and x2 you start with the initial guess value of x1 x2 right but you apply the value of only x1 find out what is the value of x2 at which y will become minimum this may not be the final solution because it is a final solution corresponding to that value of x1 which itself is not the solution okay now you got the new value of y now you got a new x2 keep that x2 fixed and get back x1 keep that x1 fixed get back x2 so that means you are 
instead of searching 9 at a time you are going like this 1 at a time you are handling. So, if it is a if it is a function of several variables all but one variable you assume some values and calculate that variable and write the objective function in terms of that variable. That variable if it is possible for you to take dy by dx take dy by dx equate it to 0 and get the solve that equation if it is a quadratic or cubic you can solve. But if it is e to the power of sin e to the power of 3 x square minus something and then what do you do to solve that? You apply your golden section search Fibonacci search or dichotomous search and find out that value of x n this could be x 1, x 2, x 3 whatever find out the value of x n which is the optimum solution when all, all the other variables are kept fixed ok. Now, in the next step go to the next variable like that one at a time you do eventually you will reach the eventually you will reach your destination right. So, let us do this unidirectional search it become clear we solve an example problem with this. Okay. So, we can say this is a solve for one variable at a time ok problem number thirty six ok. Optimize y I am not able to come up with the actual heat thermal sensors example for this because it has to be multivariable, it has to be unconstrained and there should be cross terms. It is very difficult. There could be some problem which comes like that. But since we have to progress from unconstrained to a constraint, we can take a problem which is just just written out in terms of x1 and x2, right? X1 could be, uh, be the length of the duct, it could be the fan and duct problem, whatever, right? So the problem is consider consider the problem of optimizing y is equal to 8 plus x1 squared by 2 plus 2 by x1 x2 plus 6 x2, subject to the condition x1 x2 greater than 0. solve it solve it using the univariate search method solve it using the univariate search method with an initial guess of x1 equal to 1 and x2 equal to 1 solve it using the univariate search method with an initial guess of Many of you are having starting trouble, right? You don't know what the algorithm is all about. I will help you. So, as usual, we open up a tabular column, serial number x1, x2, y. Needless to say, you have to come up with your own stopping criterion, which is rational and reasonable, okay. Serial number. this is fine what is the algorithm. So, dou y by dou x 1 x 1 fine dou y by dou x 2 pretty straightforward you can solve it using the Lagrangian multiplier method and go home, but that is not the intent. 
okay we want to solve for one variable at a time univariate search how does the algorithm work then anyway so we want to make dy by dx1 equal to 0 right you want to make it stationary right so for this now this becomes x1 okay so x1 correct so this is I made the derivative stationary dou y by dou x1 equal to 0, dou y by dou x2 equal to 0. So, the first one it results in x1 equal to 2 by x2 to the power of 1 third. That means, in any iteration, if I have x2 using the dou y by dou x1 equal to 0 or making y stationary with respect to x1, I have an opportunity to calculate x1 in terms of x2. Once I calculate that x2, I can substitute in the other equation which helps me to calculate x2 in terms of x1. Is that correct? Fine. Now, please start. So, we start with 1. Given x1, you have to use this equation to get x2. What is the value of x2? Point 0.58. Good. For that, y. Do not be lazy. Please calculate the value of y. Why will take some time? Huh? Fine, fifteen point four three. Now, using this value of x two, go to equation one and get the value of x two. Go to get the value of x one. Sorry. Yes, Vikram. If you take uh, the first equation, x one is equal to two by cube root of uh, two by x two. You can instead write x2 is equal to 2 by x1 cube. But that will give good, but no, long time back. Uh, we do not want to have high. Same funda we used in system simulation. We want to put fractional powers to keep everything under check. If you want to go ahead with the other information flow diagram, which means the first equation is used to calculate x2, the second equation is used to calculate x1. I do not know whether it will converge. Maybe it converges, I do not know. Generally, I would like to put uh, fractional powers, right. Now, take the value of 0.58 and insert it into equation 1. So, we should, will call this equation 1. Really like rapid, rapid convergence, very 0.58 and Huh? No, 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 no. Uh. Fourteen point. This is a minimum, right? We are seeking a minimum. Yeah, x one and x two in the denominator. Okay. They are also in the numerator, but we already checked. Now take the value of point seven and come again. 1.2 good and 0.45 this is easy you know i think everybody is following one variable at a time that's all vipin you are able to follow hmm. it will converge in another two iterations don't worry good 14 point i think it's we are closing in And with 0.45, you get x1. 
fine so I think we can stop here. Okay. But it was so nice that x1 cube x2 equal to 2. Sometimes this could be x1 3 to 3.5 x2 minus x1 it will be and then it will become a big uh, chore, it will become a great effort to find x1 of from all the other variables. You have to solve for x1, it got only one, it had only one term. Suppose you have x1 squared x2 minus 2 sin x1 by e to the power of uh, 2 x1, then you will use golden section search to find out x1 from x2. You will use golden section search to find x2 from x1, but two highly efficient single variable searches will use at a time and then when they are joined together one variable at a time it will rapidly converge. Why all this are I can solve it using Lagrange multiplier method. You do not have to simultaneously solve that is the advantage. You have many variable problem, you have many variables and it becomes messy to solve simultaneous equation you can go you can use this method instead of the Lagrange multiplier. Lagrange multiplier method is not the cure all, it is not a universal cure for all optimization problems okay. Though we do, we saw how to use Kuhn Tucker conditions, how to handle inequality conditions all that, that is why Lagrange multiplier is always taught first in an optimization course because that puts things in perspective, it is a very powerful technique. It is nice to show it in class and ask questions in the quiz and all that if it is two or three variables but beyond that it it is very difficult that is why search techniques have evolved over time okay. So, differential I mean it should be differentiable. Yeah it should be differential or I will numerically evaluate the different I will numerically get dy by dx. It is possible no if I have several CFD solution numerical differentiation I will use. If you do not like then all this then you have to go to the genetic algorithm simulated annealing I mean we are going to look at all this the coming in the last week. Okay, but it is it is slight though it also implies derivatives it is slightly it is better than Lagrange multiplier because you do not have to invert a set of simul you do not have to invert a matrix or use Gaussian elimination uh, you do not have to simultaneously solve you are sequentially solving okay fine. Now we will stay with this problem and then look at other methods. So you have learned two methods right the lattice search though it, I did not give you example and the univariate search. The next is one of the most powerful method called the Cauchy's method. Please be reminded that we are handling multivariable unconstrained optimization problem. Cauchy's method also popularly known as the steepest ascent or the steepest descent is a very powerful technique if you start far away from the optimum it will converge rapidly but as you get closer to the optimum it becomes very very sluggish okay. Needless to say because of the name method of steepest ascent or descent you, you know that we are going to use information on the derivatives. So we are going to use information on the derivatives in order to develop the algorithm. So you know that if you have a so del if y is a function of x1 we can write like this correct where i1 i2 i3 are all unit vectors so i1 to i n are the unit vectors The maximum rate of change of a function occurs in a direction which is orthogonal to the 
curve that we already seen for example if you have a function like this you are looking at something which is orthogonal in fact I we demonstrated it graphically for the Lagrange multiplier method. So that is why so this orthogonal direction is given by the gradient vector okay. So from vector calculus or I can say from it follows that I will prove it after some time from vector calculus it follows that the direction in which you will move your initial point will obey this law okay. What does it mean suppose you choose delta x1 why is a function of x1 to xn after all it is a search method that means it that means it works by trial and error you start with a particular value of x1 x2 xn that is you start with what is called x0 x0 is you start with x0 you know all the values of you assume the values of x1 x2 up to xn assume that y is continuous and differentiable so dy by dx1 dy by dx2 all these values you can calculate at this x0 correct so the denominator all the values are known suppose numerator you just fix delta x1 then all the other delta x s get fixed. So, if delta so therefore x 1 new x 1 old plus delta x 1 like that you can get all that. now you can get get x get x 1 anyway since from vector calculus since from vector calculus you know that this when you are orthogonal to the iso objective line there is a maximum rate of change of the function if you follow this if you follow this then you are moving along this direction but there is a problem in this what is the problem how far should you go okay so the direction may be all right see for example uh, okay we will So let us say you start like this okay x means this vector is a vector of x1 to xn okay x1 now this only gives you that this is the direction of movement how far you will go has to be decided by something else but a very naive or very simple way of using this algorithm will be to make this one decide delta x1 and and proceed after some time if the chunk if the function changes or you get some gut but then the delta x1 can be appro appropriately reduced or increased this is a very simple way to this is a very simple interpretation of the Cauchy's method a slightly more advanced is version is I will call this as alpha okay so though I decide the direction on this basis on this basis every iteration I will try to calculate the value of alpha what is that value of alpha which will minimize y at the current point that is possible I will make it clear within now everything will sound very nebulous but once we solve it will be easier okay and then this value of alpha, now you can see that already the problem is difficult every iteration I want to calculate the value of alpha but if you do that if you calculate the value of alpha and proceed with this algorithm it will be exceedingly fast now if you do not use make it 1 that means alpha is equal to 1 
then you you are presetting the value of delta x1 and calculating all the delta x2 see the delta x2 and the other things have to obey this therefore you can fix delta x1 and accordingly calculate all the other things are you getting this point now shall we solve the same problem using the we will start with 1 1 I will draw the tabular column yeah steepest ascent is very important as you can see question I am going to ask one question because the exam so pay attention please open up your calculators and try to solve this of course the problem will be much tougher but the uh, algorithm is the same. Some people can look at it and already see their further developments are possible I will come back to the, to the developments after the break but now what happened you all thought it will be one hour class or? Yes. I told you two hour class, two hour class. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. no I told you two hour class but uh, I told you after one hour I will give you the papers but I am going to do it on Thursday anyway so half an hour of Thursday's class will go next Monday I do not know I may take one and a half hour class the subsequent Monday you are all going to take the assignment test that will be the last Monday right and that Thursday we close so we just have another seven or eight classes if endurance is your problem <laughs> okay but we will we'll have to finish all this so serial number we will close by 230 okay let us see if you are able to finish this steepest ascent steepest you know, we can close Huh? What happened? Problem number 37. Revisit problem 36 and solve it using the method of steepest steepest descent. So you can write down problem number 37, revisit problem 36 and solve it using the method of steepest ascent or descent steepest ascent is for maximization problems steepest descent is for minimization problems okay y equal to Please look at the board, there is an important funda here. Okay, what is our final solution? One point one x equal to okay. Let us put x equal to point. I do not know whether we will get in three iterations, it is not guaranteed. Let us put delta x1 is point 0.3 this algorithm says delta x1 divided by dy by dx1 is equal to this because other things are not there it is a two variable problem and I am saying that this is equal to 1 I am not I am not worrying about alpha and trying to find alpha I am making it simple but now whether this delta x1 of 0.3 should be applied such that it is 1 plus 0.3 or 1 minus 0.3 you have to decide right who will decide that ah, dou y by dou x1 he will decide he or she will decide <laughs> okay so if dy by dx1 is increasing and you want a maximum then x1 will if dou y by dou x1 is positive then this point 0.3 will be added to x1 or subtracted from if you are seeking a maximization added but if dy by dx1 is increasing but you are seeking a minimization problem then this ah once you have taken care of this left hand side 
do not worry about the sign whatever you get dy by dx to the sign you hold on to that sign and then appropriately decide delta x do not mess it up otherwise you will you will go in endless loop you will not ultimately dy by dx and dy by dx2 must come very close to 0 is not it and x1 x2 should not change much if you make that mistake automatically the algorithm itself will tell you your hey you are making a mistake okay now dy by dx1 you can calculate at 1 1 get delta x so delta x1 you can fix you can fix it at 0 0.3 to start with it doesn't mean that it has come from heaven it's frozen and all that after some iterations you can make it 0 0.2 0 0.1 whatever but if it is 0.1 then it will take a long time for us to complete so i made it 0 0.3 uh, yes see so this 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 only tells you how delta x2 should change in relation to delta x1 and the first first derivative but whether this delta x1 is is a should be added to x1 or subtracted from x1 depends on the nature of dy by dx1 not only does it depend on the na nature of dy by dx1 it is it also depends on whether you want a maximum or a minimum if you if you are seeking a maximization problem and dy by dx1 is increasing then next iteration 1 will become 1.3 if dy by dx1 is increasing but if you want a minimization if you are looking at minimization next iteration will be 1 minus 0.3 is it clear and then left hand side you keep it right hand side delta x2 minus or plus whatever it comes out of this relation put it directly this manipulation you do only for delta x1 no no uh, okay whatever um, what do you want to do or you can make delta x after dy by dx you can make this minus point anyway it is not going to happen for us the delta x1 is your answer is 1.6 no we are minimizing we are minimizing right we are minimizing what is dy by dx1 at 1 1 minus 1 and 4 so what is this fellow minus they are gone already huh? minus minus 1.2 minus 1.2 there is no hope x1 x2 had to be positive so it kept right away <laughs> what do you do very good i also did that <laughs> so you can't go home point 1 <laughs> what is the problem good what is the problem some people already figured out that become minus 1.2 1 minus 1.2 1 minus, 1 .2 minus point 0.2 x1 x2 greater than 0 i have given minimization problem if you don't put that uh, constraint then some fellow will take a negative value and you will cheat all the others x1 x2 are representing table chair labor i mean they cannot be negative they are all physical variables okay so delta x1 is 0 0.1 very good so delta x2 is equal to minus 0 0.4 minus 1. very good now this fellow is 1.1 now it will start behaving funny dy by dx1 dy by dx2 will become very close to zero because we are we are very close to the solution but dy by dx1 is far away that won't be so actually after 8 or 9 iterations it doesn't converge in <laughs> you know, you, i have already done it i want you to know why i don't i want you to know why the cauchy's method sometimes will fail it looks very impressive and simple if you are far away from the optimum suppose you started with 5 or you started with 6 it will quickly come to 1 1 or a point between 1 and 1.6 it will struggle that is x1 i am saying okay so you complete the second iteration just finish one more iteration dy by dx1 is what minus 1.65 ah uh, 0.1 it's plus it's still plus yeah it is still plus so put the sign here minus 0.06 so 1.2 
Yeah, we will stop here.